Well, hello and welcome to another video by Financial Earning. On today's video, we're going to break down one of Mullen's filings. This one is the S1 that was dropped this week. This actually correlates with an 8K that Mullen shared back in May. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So there's quite a bit of heavy reading involved in the 8K in the registration filing, and then also in the S1. I went ahead and boxed some of the important statements that I'd like to show you all in green. Uh, but by all means, if you'd like to read through the full filings, uh, go ahead and go to the sec.gov website, go to uh, company filing, uh, search for MULN. You can find all of Mullen's filings there in the Edgar search. But jumping right in, this is from the 8K. This is an entry into material definitive agreement, and this was actually shared back on May 21st, 2024. And this is a stock purchase agreement. Uh, so sometimes people call it a securities purchase agreement. This one's a stock purchase agreement. Uh, this one is actually just for the stocks themselves. There's no warrants attached to this specific uh, definitive agreement, this material definitive agreement, which is part of this S1. So let's go ahead and continue. Uh, you can see here that uh, has the effective date of the registration statement uh, where it's going to be shared below uh, until earlier of. Here's the part that I thought was important. This is a 36 month uh, of commencement date. So there is a three year period for uh, this filing for this financing to be able to be used. Uh, that is the expiration for this specific uh, agreement. Uh, and then going down a little bit further, you can see the aggregate purchase price. That is $150 million. Uh, and that is going to be uh, provided to Mullen through the purchase of stock. So let's continue reading. You'll see a little bit more of how this, tr how this transaction is going to occur over the next three year period. Uh, so it says, and also just to point out, as consideration for uh, the commitment to purchase the company's uh, common stock under this purchase agreement, the company agreed to issue shares of common stock equal to 6 million divided by the lower of the, and they mention a word called VWAP, on the effective date of the initial registration statement or the closing price of the common stock on the effective date of the initial registration. Uh, <clears throat> so just wanted to kind of mention that VWAP is volume weighted average price. Uh, so you're gonna see uh, a little bit more about that as we continue throughout this uh, video. And then jumping down, uh, mentions after the commencement date, um, as defined below, on any business day selected by the company, and that's important. So the company is actually the one who decides when uh, the stock purchase will be taking, uh, will, will be effective. Um, so it says the company uh, may from time to time as its sole discretion direct the investor to purchase such number of shares of common stock that does not exceed 20% of the trading volume of the NASDAQ stock market on the applicable purchase date at a purchase price uh, equal to 94% of the lower of, and then this is where the VWAP is mentioned again. It kind of gives a couple of different scenarios on what exactly that purchase price is gonna be. It's either going to be 94% of the lowest daily VWAP of any trading day uh, within that 15 days prior to uh, the stock purchase request. Um, and then, or, uh, the closing price of common stock on the applicable purchase date. Uh, so there's a, there's a couple different options. And again, this is going to be the lower of. So um, if you're reflecting, if they're reflecting back on the 15 day period and they have a lower price, uh, according to that VWAP, they're able to make that 94% uh, cost of uh, purchase for those shares, or they could utilize the, the same day and they get a 94% purchase price of uh, based off of the lowest price for that specific uh, closing date. Uh, the company will control the timing and the amount of sales of its common stock to the investor. Again, just pointing out that the company does have the power to uh, kind of manage when these shares will be getting um, distributed to the investor via the purchase. Um, continue a little bit further. Uh, and the investor has no right to require the company to sell any of the shares to it under this purchase agreement. So again, uh, it's really up to the company, the way that this agreement is, is stated, exactly how much of this $150 million aggregate purchase price will be utilized. Uh, and there's some other uh, stipulations, so let's just continue reading through this. 
Um, actual sales of shares of common stock to the investor under the purchase agreement will depend on a variety of factors to be determined by the company from time to time, including, among others, market conditions, trading pricing of common stock, and determinations by the company as to available and appropriate sources of funding for the company and its operations. The investor may not assign or transfer its rights and obligations under the purchase agreement. So only, is, only the investor, and we'll talk about who that is in the upcoming slides, has the uh, the rights for this agreement they cannot transfer this right to anyone else they can't basically sub sublet or subsell this agreement to any other um, entities and then another section I, I have boxed here the company has agreed not to issue or sell to the investor under the purchase agreement any shares of its common stock including the committed shares in excess of and they list that 2.391 million shares which is equal to 99.99 percent of shares of common stock outstanding uh, prior to the execution of this purchase agreement. So again, um, that is the maximum that the company is allowed to uh, offer this investor at this current time. And we'll go into uh, how that can get changed on a future slide. All right, another section to bring up uh, the top there says the purchase agreement may be terminated by the company at any time at its sole discretion without any cost or penalty. So again, this is kind of like an open line of credit. The company can choose when to utilize uh, the transactions and they can choose when to cancel it. So if the company does uh, receive some windfall of money or uh, they're able to start to generate that uh, cash flow, they have the option to basically just cancel the rest of this SPA without any kind of penalty at all to the company. Uh, reading a little bit further, the investor has agreed not to cause or engage in any manner whatsoever any direct or indirect short selling or hedging of the company's common stock. So again, uh, this investor is pledging not to short sell, not to hedge uh, the company's stock. So a lot of times when you hear about toxic lenders, uh, that would involve a lender that actually shorts the company of, on the front end and then begins to rapidly sell off to reduce the price to gain additional um, money additional capital on these short sales themselves. So that is something that is not part of this agreement. The investor agreed not to uh, engage in that type of activity. And then I went ahead and boxed two exhibits. We're gonna go over those two exhibits uh, in the next couple of slides. Uh, this is the common stock purchase agreement. So the full purchase agreement, this was just the 8K. And then also just a little bit about the registration rights agreement. All right, starting with the common stock purchase agreement. Again, this is dated May 21st, 2024. And you can see here, this is between Mullen Automotive and Isusa Holdings LLC. So Isusa Holdings is the investor for this uh, specific purchase agreement. Let's continue reading. The investor shall purchase from the company up to the lesser of $150 million, um, which is the total price commitment and an aggregate gross purchase price, uh, duly authorized, uh, validity issued, fully paid non accessible shares of common stock um, or uh, the other option, uh, the lesser of uh, either the 150 million or the exchange cap to the extent applicable under section 2.3. Uh, so basically they, they cannot violate the overall uh, market cap, the exchange cap of the company uh, when they're making these purchases. So you can't just do all this at one time. As you know, Mark, uh, Mullen's market cap is a little under uh, $40 million right now. So uh, this company cannot just purchase $150 million worth of shares because uh, there's just not that many shares available for the market cap uh, at the current time. Uh, going into that VWAP purchases, um, again, um, the closing price or the floor plan for this specific SPA is equal to or greater than 10 cents. And the company shall have the right but not obligations to direct the investor by its delivery to the investor of a VWAP purchase notice to purchase uh, the VWAP purchase sale amount. So this is an, a way that the company can kind of protect uh, the overall uh, share price. Uh, they can direct this, uh, this investor to make these purchases uh, to, to continue to um, drive back up uh, the purchase price uh, and create that volume and everything else like that. Uh, as we know, that uh, they're going to talk a little bit about what this money is going to be used for in the upcoming slides. Um, so we'll go ahead and cover that as well. 
Uh, and that is here actually, sorry, on the investment purpose, section 3.4. It says the investor is acquiring the sec uh, securities for its own account for investment purposes only and not with a view towards or for resale in connections with the public sale or distribution thereof except pursuant to sales registered under or exempt from the registration requirements of the Security Act. So I'll stop right there. Uh, basically, this is letting you know that this investor is looking for a long investment. They're not looking for a rapid sale of these uh, shares. That is the investment purpose. They are looking to be a long investor in the company. It's considered an equity investment. Let's continue on. Provided, however, that by making the representations herein, the investor does not agree or make any representation or warranty to hold any of the securities for a minimum or other specific term and reserves the right to dispose of the securities in any time in accordance with or pursuant to registration statement filed uh, pursuant to the registration rights agreement. We'll go over that a little bit later. Um, or in applicable exemptions under the Securities Act, the investor does not presently have any agreement or understanding directly or indirectly with any person to sell or distribute any of the securities. So again, the company is not looking to sell these uh, these securities. They're looking to purchase them and hold them. However, uh, this statement does allow them uh, for certain reasons to be able to sell and dispose of the shares. Um, so it's really up to the investor's discretion, but their intent is to hold long and be an equity investment. And then section 3.11, no prior short sales at no time prior to the date of this agreement has any of the investor, its agents, representatives, or affiliates engaged in or affected in any manner whatsoever, directly or indirectly, any short sales of the common stock, hedging transactions, which establishes a net short position with respect to the common stock. So Asusa Holdings, has, has they're declaring here that they've never short sold uh, their Mullen shares um, that they've owned from time to time, and they are not planning in fact, they are not allowed, it's short sell restricted. They are not allowed to sell these shorts. Um, and you can tell by the investment that it's an equity investment. So again, I have to ask all the viewers here and I have to ask myself from time to time, uh, just looking at it from a bullish speculation here, um, why would an investor invest $150 million uh, into a company with a market cap under $40 million? If you look at that, uh, it would take about 4x to be able to actually meet the market cap amount. Um, so when I look at this, uh, I tend to think that the company has provided this investor with a forecast, uh, with some forward-looking information that makes the investor feel that this $150 million um, is going to be used uh, appropriately and it should correlate with what a market cap, a projected market cap should be. And again, that's my bullish perspective, my bullish speculation. Just wanted to share that with you all um, as we continue on through these documents. All right, getting into the section about capitalization, uh, reading over the box section in green, except as set forth in the commission documents, there are no securities or instruments containing anti-dilution or similar provisions that will be triggered by this agreement. So let's pause there. Uh, in some previous security purchase agreements, there was some anti-dilutive clauses that would allow uh, the uh, investor to be able to get additional shares um, in the event that the um, the price action and the, the use of the securities caused a dilutive effect. So again, that is not part of this agreement. And again, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is a stock purchase agreement. There are no warrants tied to this $150 million. Uh, plus the six million um, that they will be receiving um, as part of the agreement to um, lend and invest this money. Actually, it's not lend, it's an invest because uh, they're purchasing these shares. Uh, so continuing on uh, the registration rights agreement or any other transaction documents or the consummation of the transactions described herein or therein. Uh, so again, that, that was the last of that section there, but there is no anti-dilution uh, provisions in this um, filing. Uh, going into the dilutive effect, uh, the company is aware and acknowledges that the issuance of securities could cause a dilution, could cause dilution to existing stockholders and could significantly increase the outstanding number of shares of common stock. Well, that's kind of a no-brainer, but you still have to put it in here. If you are offering common stocks for purchase uh, from an investor, it's going to increase the outstanding share count, the common share float, if you will. Um, so there would be a form of dilutive effect. It isn't guaranteed to be a dilutive effect on price uh, if there is justification for an uptick in volume and the price goes up. Um, there is an opportunity here for the market cap to grow, although there are shares being injected. 
Uh, will that slow down uh, the growth opportunities? In my opinion, yes, it will. However, if there is significant news, if there is something that really puts uh, a significant value on the investment, um, that should help grow. And then again, the company has the opportunity to, to say how much of these securities will be sold at any given time. So there's opportunity once the investor has, has reached their saturation at either 9.9 .9 or 19.99% uh, to have some significant news to still increase that share price. So let's, get, let's continue reading. Uh, going into the reservation of common stock I'm sorry, let's finish out the dilutive effect. Uh, the company further acknowledges that its obligation to issue the commitment shares and to issue the shares pursuant to the terms of a VWAP purchase in accordance with the agreement in is, in each case, unconditional regardless of the dilutive effect which, su uh, which uh, that such issuance may have on the ownership interests of other stockholders of the company. So, of course, if you are offering a, uh, a purchase of a share, at a basically 6% discount, you're getting it at 94% of whatever that value would be, uh, and it's the lowest value over the 15 day uh, period, you are gonna be getting these stock at a discount. And again, I want you to think about this. If you were lending someone money, there's typically an interest rate attached to that. I don't see anywhere in these provisions where there's an interest rate. So this is the opportunity for the investor to uh, basically kind of hedge their bets, if you will, in terms of getting some form of return on investment. They are guaranteed to be able to purchase these shares at a 6% discount at the lowest price. Uh, so just wanna kind of put that out there. And again, the company is uh, controlling when that uh, purchase happens. So they could do it every 15 days. There could be a, a disbursement uh, to where it allows the, the share price to grow. I don't really know how that's going to be managed by the company, but just wanted to, to bring that up to you all and make you aware. All right, getting into the reservation of common stock. Uh, so the shares pursuant to this agreement, as of the date of this agreement, the company has reserved and as of the commitment state, commencement date, shall have continued to reserve out of its authorized and unissued common stock 2,391,073 shares of common stock solely for the purpose of effecting VWAP purchases and issuing the commitment shares. The number of uh, shares of common stock so reserved for the purpose of effecting the VWAP purchases under this agreement may be increased from time to time by the company from and after the commencement date and such number of reserved shares may be reduced from and after the commencement date, commencement date only by the number of shares actually issued sold and delivered to the investor pursuant of any VWAP purchase effect from and after the commencement date uh, purchase of this agreement. So basically, uh, for the current state of this agreement, uh, they have only uh, 2,391,073 shares kind of reserved, uh, set to the side that this specific company is allowed to purchase. And that has a lot to do with uh, a certain percentages of ownership of the outstanding shares. So as that outstanding share count changes, uh, the percent of ownership, of course, will change with it. Uh, and there will be an opportunity for a shareholder vote to allow uh, the company to own more than 9.9% or the lender to own more than 9.9%. Let's continue reading through a little bit further under the no dilutive issuances during reference period. Neither the company nor any subsidiary shall issue, sell, or grant any right option or warrant to the purchase or issue, sell, or grant any right to the reprice or otherwise dispose of for cash or enter into any agreement, plan, or arrangement contemplating any of the foregoing or seek to utilize any existing agreement, plan, or arrangement to affect any of the foregoing or announce any offer, issuance, sale, or grant of any option or warrant to purchase or other dis disposition for cash or any agreement, plan, or arrangement, therefore, at any time with respect to each VWAP, VWAP purchase under this agreement for which the company has delivered to the investor a VWAP purchase notice, the period beginning on the third trading day, immediately preceding the applicable VWAP purchase date of such VWAP purchase and ending on the third trading day. So let's unpack that a little bit. So what that's letting you know is that uh, there is no, um, based off of this clause, they are not going to convert these common shares to any form of warrant, 
They're not going to be uh, converting it over to any form of cash or anything else like that. They have to be used as described in this security purchase agreement. All right, and as I've already mentioned before, uh, ISUSA did already put out a statement in one of the other filings that they have never short sold the Mullen stock before. And for this specific uh, stock purchase agreement, there is section 5.9, which is the selling restriction. So let's go ahead and read the section boxed in green, except as expressly set forth below the investor covenants that from and after the closing date through and including the trading day next following the expiration or termination of this agreement, neither the investor nor any of its affiliates nor any entity managed or controlled by the investor, collectively the restricted persons, shall directly or indirectly engage in any short sales involving the company's securities or grant any option to purchase or acquire any right to dispose of or otherwise dispose for value of any shares of common stock or any securities convertible into an exercisable or exchangeable for any shares of common stock or enter into any swap, hedge, or other similar agreement that transfers in whole or in part the economic risk of ownership of the common stock. Notwithstanding the foregoing, it is expressly understood and agreed that nothing contained herein shall, without implication that the contrary would otherwise be true, prohibit any restricted person during the restricted period from selling long um, the securities or selling a number of shares of common stock equal to the number of shares that such restricted person is or may be obligated to purchase under a pending VWAP purchase notice, but has not yet taken possession of so long as such restricted person delivers the shares purchased pursuant to such VOA purchase notice to the purchaser therefore are thereof or the applicable broker dealer up upon such restricted persons receipt of such shares of common stock from the company pursuant to this agreement so in other words uh, ASUSA has a section here in this stock purchase agreement that says that they will not short sell any of these securities or any of these uh, common shares that they do own or that they will plan to own. So that is, again, that's another good thing that just shows that this is really for an investment purpose, not for a, to a type of spiral uh, toxic uh, dilution type of situation, uh, which we have seen Mullen uh, get into before from some other lenders. Uh, and then just jumping down to section 6.2, just talks about some of the conditions precedent to commencement. Uh, they're all listed there, I through um, 16. So if you'd like to read through all of those, you can. And then section 6.3 also talks about conditions precedent to purchases by the investor. So I thought section 5.9 was very important. A lot of people were uncertain about ISUSA in general as a lender, but after reading this specific uh, section, this clause of the stock purchase agreement, and then knowing that they've already put out a statement that they have never short sell Mullen, uh, in my opinion, that, and it's not just my opinion, it's what's written, uh, that gives me good confidence that ISUSA actually is a, an investor for Mullen Automotive and that they are planning on holding long and that this is more of an equity type of investment. All right, jumping into a different filing, this is the registration rights agreement. I didn't really grab a whole lot of sections out of this. Uh, some of it was basically just repeating, but this is a supplemental exhibit that was part of the 8K. Uh, this goes hand in hand with the stock purchase agreement. Uh, but let's go ahead and read the section boxed in green. This should look familiar. Uh, a lot of these uh, specific um, cases or a lot of uh, the details in this registration rights agreement you can also find in sections of the stock purchase agreement as well as the 8k but it says the company and the investor have entered into that certain common stock purchase agreement dated as of the date hereof and we know that this is the may 21st 2024 pursuant to which the company may issue to the investor from time to time up to 19.99 percent of the company's outstanding shares of common stock as of the date of this agreement per value of 0.001 per share unless stockholder approval is obtained to issue more than 19.99 percent so again we know if any a uh, specific investor, if any entity owns more than 9.99%, that will trigger and flip in event uh, for Mullen Automotive and any of the shareholders that have that right. So uh, many shareholders that were holding um, earlier in May, they did receive a shareholder right. It was a form of a dividend and that dividend will become triggered if any 
a single investor, single entity owns more than 9.99%. And you can see based off of this registration rights agreement uh, that it is setting up ESUSA to be able to hold more than 9.99%, but we'll have to see exactly um, how that unfolds. And then going down into the agreement, I went ahead and uh, boxed in uh, section Part of, it's part of the registration, uh, section A. It says mandatory registration. The company shall prepare and as soon as practicable, practicable sorry, uh, but in no event later than the filing deadline, file with the commission an initial registration state, statement on form S1. And as you all know, uh, the S1 was filed um, just this past week. Um, so just wanted to kind of uh, make you all aware of that. Um, many of you have seen this. There's been some requests to kind of go over the S1. We will touch base on the S1, but just kind of wanted to set it up. And let's go ahead and continue reading. So, um, or equivalent if form S1 is unavailable to the company covering the resale by the investor of all of the commitment shares and the maximum number of additional registrable uh, securities as shall be permitted to be included thereon in accordance with applicable commission rules regulations and interpretations so as to permit the resale of such registrable securities by the investor under rule 415 under the securities act at then prevailing market prices uh, so just wanted to kind of go over that section this is again the mandatory registration so um, this is kind of tying in that S1 form, which we will be going over with shortly. All right, as mentioned, here is that S1. Uh, this is what was just put out on June 24th, 2024, uh, just this past week. Uh, this is the date of record for this S1. Uh, so let's go ahead and read the section box in green. Uh, you can see that uh, this prospectus is related to a potential offer and sale from time to time of up to 75 million shares of our common stock for a value of 0 0.001 per share by Isusa Holdings. So Isusa Holdings is the selling stockholder. Um, for more information about the selling stockholder, uh, the shares of common stock to which this perspective relates will or may be issued by us to the selling stockholder pursuant to a common stock purchase agreement dated May 21st, 2024. So there you go. That ties this S1 directly to that 8K, the registration of rights, that stock purchase agreement. All of that is all tied in together. Uh, this was the last section pending the shareholder vote, which will be happening on July 9th. But let's go ahead and continue reading through. It says, under the applicable rules of the NASDAQ stock market, in no event may we issue to the selling stockholder shares of our common stock representing more than 19.99% of the total number of shares of common stock outstanding immediately prior to the execution of the purchase agreement unless we obtain the approval of issuance of such shares by our stockholders in accordance with the applicable stock exchange rules. So again, there you have it. This is what one of those proposals are on the July 9th uh, shareholder vote. So continue on. Such shares of common stock consist of shares that we may in our sole discretion elect to sell to the selling, st selling stockholder from time to time after the date of this prospectus pursuant to the purchase agreement. Shares of common stock that we have agreed to issue to the selling stockholder as consideration for its commitment to purchase shares of our common stock. Um, and just to tie that in, just to kind of uh, remind you all, there was a 6 million share commitment that Mullen was offering to Isusa for this specific stock purchase agreement. So let's go ahead and get back into it. Um, half of which will be issued upon the effective date of the registration statement of which this perspective forms a part and the remaining half to be issued upon stockholder approval of the transactions contemplated by the purchase agreement. Each share of common stock offered under this prospectus has associated with it one right to purchase from us one ten thousandth of a share of our series A1 junior participating preferred stock per value 0 0.001 per share under our rights agreement. Please see the section entitled descriptions of securities uh, rights agreement series A1 junior participating preferred stock in this prospectus for more detailed dis discussion. So um, some of you may remember that there was series A1 junior participating preferred stock mentioned uh, earlier on, and that was around the time that the shareholder rights agreement was formed that had to do with that dividend. So 
Uh, basically, that is allowing Isusa to now be able to take advantage of that same Series A1 Junior participating preferred stock. And again, uh, the nice thing with that is if they choose to purchase those shares, that is going to uh, be able to give Mullen additional uh, money uh, for their operations. So going down to this um, second box section, it says a selling stockholder may sell or otherwise dispose of the shares of common stock included in this prospectus in a number of different ways and at varying prices. Although the selling stockholder is obligated to purchase shares of our common stock under the terms and subject to the conditions and limitations of the purchase agreement to, ex to the extent we choose to sell such shares of our common stock to it. The timing and the amount of any sales of common stock by the selling stockholder are within the sole discretion of the selling stockholder. There can be no assurances that we will choose to sell any shares of our common stock to the selling stockholder or that the selling stockholder will sell any or all of the shares of our common stock, if any, purchased under the purchase agreement pursuant to this prospectus. So again, uh, one other thing I did want to mention to you all is Mullen Automotive is actually responsible for when these shares uh, will be uh, delivered to the selling uh, stockholder or the uh, selling lender here. So uh, it's not ISUSA that gets to say, hey, I want 10 million shares right now. It is up to Mullen Automotive, uh, basically based off that VWAP, uh, if you recall, um, there is a 15 day at the lowest uh, price, a 96% of that price, uh, according to that VWAP, that um, Mullen is able to sell Isusa sh uh, these sh uh, shares. So again, it is really up to Mullen Automotive on the timing of the transaction of these sh shares. So as I mentioned, this is kind of like a form, this is kind of like a line of credit. If Mullen chooses to utilize it, um, they will be utilizing their shares, their stock to be able to gain capital uh, for their operations and other items. Um, and then Isusa will own those shares and it'll be up to Is Isusa's discretion if they choose to sell those long or if they want to hold their investment. So going down to the last section I have boxed here, I think it's important that everyone understands um, some of the information in this S1. Uh, it says investing in our securities involves a high degree of risk. Before making any investment in our securities, you should read and carefully consider the risks described in this prospectus under the heading risk factors beginning on page five of this prospectus in our filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission. So we're gonna go over uh, some of those risks on the next uh, slide, but just wanted to go ahead and kind of go over the basics of this S1 and just remind you all that it's gonna be Mullen Automotive that decides when these transactions do occur and they have a three year period to be able to exercise uh, these shares um, and these purchases. All right, before we get into the risk factors, let's go ahead and go over a little bit more of the details here in this S1. Uh, we're talking about the committed equity financing. So uh, kind of uh, summarizing what we already read a little bit on that 8K, a little bit of that registration rights and the stock purchase agreement. But here we go on May 21st, 2024, the company entered into a common stock purchase agreement with Isusa Holdings, the investor or selling stockholder. So those are the two names if you hear throughout this prospectus, or if you did hear this on the stock uh, purchase agreement, uh, they are referring to Asusa Holdings, uh, pursuant to which the investor has agreed to purchase from the company at the company's discretion, I'm sorry, at the company's direction from time to time in its sole discretion from and after the effective date of the registration statement of which this prospectus forms a part and until the earlier of the 36 month anniversary of the commencement date or the termination of the purchase agreement in accordance with the terms thereof. So again, Mullen can choose at any point in time to cancel the, the remaining line of credit, if you will, from the stock purchase agreement. So again, Mullen has quite a bit of leverage in terms of how much of this financing they're going to need and when they want to use this. Again, what's nice about uh, this uh, stock purchase agreement is there's no interest bearing on this stock purchase agreement. So, um, it's, it's a little bit different than just getting, you know, a, a standard line of credit and you have to pay the interest and pay it back. Uh, Mullen is choosing to utilize their shares uh, to provide those to Isusa as an investment for Isusa, and they're able to get that cash. So let's continue reading throughout the rest of this. 
it says having a total maximum aggregate aggregate purchase of 150 million dollars upon the terms and subject to the conditions and limitations set forth therein and then we're going to go down to the next box section it says as consideration for its commitment to purchase the company's common stock under the purchase agreement the company agreed to issue shares of common stock in an e in an amount equal to six million dollars so i mentioned six million shares earlier my apologies we're talking six million dollars divided by the lower of the volume weighted average price that's that view app we've been talking about of the common stock on the effective date of the registration statement to which this prospectus relates and so it's gonna be the lower of remember that uh the closing price of the common stock on the effective date of such registration statement to the investor half of the committed shares will be issued upon the effective date of the registration statement to which this prospectus relates and the remaining amount will be delivered upon stockholder approval of the issuance of shares in excess of the exchange cap provided that all the committed shares will be issued by the date that is six months from the date of the purchase agreement so again um the, the mullen has already committed uh, the three million dollars to isusa for this stock purchase agreement so they're able to um, at any point in time um, exercise the right for those shares and then the remainder of that uh, will have to be voted on by the shareholders as uh, we will have to uh, vote to increase the current market cap and approve uh, these additional shares um, after the commencement date on any business date selected by the company where the closing sale price of the common stock is equal to or greater than 10 cents the company may from time to time at its sole discretion direct the investor to purchase such number of shares of common stock that does not exceed 20 percent of the trading volume on the nasdaq stock market on the applicable purchase date at a purchase price per share equal to 94 percent of the lower of the lowest daily VWAP of any trading day during the 15 trading days prior to and including the purchase date. So that's the first, um, you know, statement or that's the first um, type of uh, purchase um, that uh, ISUSA is able to do. And again, they have to be directed by Mullen Automotive. They're the ones that get to initiate this transaction. Um, and then the next lower of is going to be the closing price of the common stock on the applicable purchase date. So if the actual day that Mullen wants Isusa to purchase the shares happens to be lower than the uh, than the previous 15 days, uh, you know, utilizing that VWAP, then again, um, Isusa would be able to purchase at the current day's closing price. Um, and that the company would control the timing and the amount of any sales of its common stock to the investor and the investor has no right to require the company to sell any shares to it under this purchase agreement so again mullen automotive gets to choose when these shares are being exercised actual share actual sales of shares of common stock to the investor under the purchase agreement will depend on a variety of factors to be determined by the company from time to time including market conditions trading price of its common stock and determinations by the company as to available and appropriate sources of funding for the company and its operations the investor may not assign or transfer its rights and obligations under the purchase agreement so susa cannot sublet or sublease if you if you will this uh, stock purchase agreement uh, they have to uh, continue ownership uh, throughout this agreement uh, the purchase agreement prohibits the company from directing the investor to purchase any shares of common stock if those shares when aggregated with all other shares of the common stock then beneficially owned by the investors affiliates um, as calculated by the Security Exchange Act 1934, as amended, would result in the investor and its affiliates beneficially owning more than 9.99% of the total outstanding shares of the company's common stock. So, uh, Mullen Automotive can't force ISUSA to uh, take ownership of more than 9.99%. As we know, uh, there is an additional fee that any single investor that wants to own more than 9.99% must pay, and that is. Um, that amount or that fee is uh, something that is decided upon by the board of directors. Uh, so let's continue through the last little section here. Uh, the company has agreed not to issue or sell to the investor under the purchase agreement any shares of its common stock, including the committed shares in excess of 
2,391,073 shares, which is equal to 19.99% of the shares of common stock outstanding immediately prior to the execution of this purchase agreement, unless the company obtains stockholder approval to issue shares in excess of the exchange cap in accordance with the applicable rules of the NASDAQ. So again, that's why this July 9th uh, vote is so important. If you would like Mullen Automotive to be able to continue in operations, uh, this stock purchase agreement is very critical to that. It's going to provide them the additional funding uh, for the rest of this year, as was already stated in a PR. Um, and you, you would have also saw that there was some discussions on some mergers and acquisitions. Um, so we'll have to see exactly what unfolds with that. Um, and then a little bit about some over the air technology. Um, so besides all that, there's also just the um, day to day operations, the cost of operations that Mullen Automotive uh, is still needing help with. Uh, they have not sold enough vehicles uh, to be able to have profit to be able to pay for those costs of operations. So this is an opportunity for Mullen to be able to bridge that gap. Um, again, for the rest of this year, we know they have plans to beginning in January for um, some of this battery production. So I think this was um, definitely needed for Mullen Automotive uh, for the time being. Um, so we'll have to see um, if this gets approved by the shareholders. Uh, this full amount uh, will be able to be utilized by the company. All right, let's talk a little bit about the offering. This is the S1 offering itself. Again, this is the 75 million shares. Uh, this is equivalent to the 150 million, um, just uh, basing it off of $2 a share. Uh, this is why there is a total of 75 million shares as part of this initial prospectus. Uh, and then they do give us an update on the common share count or the common stock. Uh, you can see that it's currently at 16,031,470 shares. So it's a slight increase. Uh, it was sitting around 15,500,000 or so um, shares uh, somewhere in the beginning of June. Um, so uh, now we're sitting around 16 million. So we do know that there were some uh, litigations that were closed up between, I believe it was Silverback, um, as well as I think Alt also received some Series E stock. So there were some uh, various methods um, that, that could have contributed to the share count increase, as well as just uh, the employee incentive uh, program that was approved uh, back in 2022. Um, so we're not quite sure exactly what, but um, this is the current share count as of this S1 date, uh, which is June 21st, 2024. And as I stated, we will go over the risk factors. But let's read through these right now. So uh, risk factors, the sale or issuance of our common stock to the investor may cause dilution in the sale of the shares of common stock acquired by the investor or the perception that such sales may occur could cause the price of our common stock to fall. So again, anytime that someone is purchasing new shares and they're getting added to the um, common share count, it is going to be a form of dilution. Uh, depending on what happens after those shares are acquired will really tell you if the price will go down or will not. So if the investor, <clears throat> Isusa Holdings, decides to hold long their shares, there will be an increase on common share count. However, there will be no additional shares available uh, for borrowing. Um, so it's really going to depend on what Isusa decides to do uh, once they acquire these shares. Again, they can only hold so many shares at a time. So um, it's gonna be interesting to see what they do. But anyway, let's continue reading through uh, the rest of these risks. So the investor will pay less than the prevailing market price for our common stock, which could cause the price of our common stock to decline. So again, this has to do with the fact that they are getting these shares at a 94% uh, of the current uh, price or actually of the lowest price of that 15 day VWAP or if it happens to be the lowest price of the day when the, the transaction is made, again, uh, it could cause the share price to go down. Uh, so if you are familiar with other companies, uh, anytime that there's an opportunity where there's a large volume spike, uh, if there's some really good news that comes out that um, creates a bullish sentiment and uh, some good amount of buying pressure, a lot of companies utilize that 
opportunity to be able to sell shares um, into the float at that point in time. Uh, so just something to remember that will stop, you know, if you will, a short squeeze uh, per se. But again, Mullen Automotive has full um, rights to the activities of exactly when these shares will be sold. Uh, reading on a little bit more into the risks, we shall, we may require additional financing to sustain our operations without which we may not be able to continue operations and the terms of subsequent financings may adversely impact our stockholders. Our management will have broad discretion over the use of its net proceeds from our sales of shares of common stock to the investor. You may not agree with how we use the proceeds and the proceeds may not be invested successfully. So again, that is a risk. Uh, exactly what Mullen decides to do with these uh, with this money, this financing, um, is it going to be successful or not? It's going to be dependent on how the market perceives uh, their decision. So, you know, if they do a merger acquisition and it is a successful one, that's great. Um, if it's not, you know, they, there's a potential that it could impact, you know, the company's um, continuation. Um, and then just recall that this is enough financing for uh, the remainder of the year. Uh, just from a cost of operations standpoint, if they choose to spend, you know, some or the majority of this on some form of merger acquisition, again, depending on the type of revenue that is generated from that, uh, there may be some additional needs of financing. So uh, we do know that there is another $100 million um, already um, assigned or already filed for Mullen. Um, so just recall they have that additional uh, money as well. Continuing through some more of these risks. It is not possible to predict the actual number of shares we will sell under the purchase agreement to the investor or the actual gross proceeds resulting from those sales. So again, Mullen can decide to cancel the stock purchase agreement at any point in time. Um, the number of shares that may be issued to the investor under the terms of the purchase agreement may be limited due to the requirements of the NASDAQ capital market. So again, if the shareholders do not vote uh, for uh, the increase of the uh, market cap and allow these additional shares to be sold, uh, then that could stop uh, this purchase agreement from uh, being fully effective here. Uh, investors who buy shares at different times will likely pay different prices. Um, our commitment to issue shares of common stock and commitment shares pursuant to the terms of the purchase agreement could encourage short sales by third parties, which could contribute to the future decline of our stock price. So again, uh, sometimes when these types of SPAs are announced, uh, some, uh, some types of short sellers uh, do try to jump in. They try to front run the dilution. Uh, but again, Mullen Automotive has an opportunity to be kind of strategic of how much is going to be let into the market at uh, various times. And then again, ASUSA has the option to hold long. Um, so that is some really good ways that they can kind of leverage and kind of hedge a little bit um, in terms of how some of these short sellers may try to utilize this um, to try to uh, get financial gains. Um, and then let's read the last section here. So I'm not gonna go over the use of proceeds again, but I will read this, um, the last uh, paragraph uh, down below. Um, it says, we expect to use the net proceeds. So I'm not gonna go over all of the use of proceeds, just this last paragraph here. We expect to use the net proceeds that we receive from sales of our common stock to the selling stockholder, if any, under the purchase agreement for general working capital and general corporate purposes. As of the date of this prospectus, we cannot specify with certainty all of the particular uses and the respective amounts we may allocate for those uses. For any net proceeds we receive accordingly, we will retain broad discretion over the use of these proceeds. There can be no assurance that we will sell any shares under or fully utilize the purchase agreement as a source of financing. Uh, so again, uh, just because this S1's filed does not mean that these shares will be coming to the market. However, if you understand uh, how much cash Mullen has on hand, it is in their best interest to be able to utilize uh, some of this stock purchase agreement very soon. And again, I'm sure Isusa would like to um, have a long stake in this uh, company depending on the type of news that Mullen Automotive has provided them. Again, I think I mentioned this earlier on. You have to recall the market cap now is less than 40 million. 
Uh, just this one stock purchase agreement alone is $150 million worth. So again, you have to ask yourself, why would Isusa put four times the market cap um, into financing uh, for purchasing shares of Mullen Automotive? We don't know. It's not public knowledge as of yet. So I think it's going to be very interesting for the rest of us shareholders to find out uh, what has urged Isusa to decide to put such a large amount into Mullen Automotive in the form of stock purchase. All right, last slide here before the outro. Just want to uh, remind you all, uh, this is part of the S1, it talks about the selling stockholder. We've already mentioned it. Uh, it's mentioned again, though, uh, that as used in this prospectus, the term selling stockholder and investor means ESUSA Holdings LLC. And then if you look at the very bottom of this slide here, you can see the number of shares of common stock owned prior to this S1 offering of ESUSA was 8,753,061. Um, and that was a combination of shares uh, through the promissory notes, as well as some warrants. And you have to remember that they cannot hold more than 10% or 9.99% of the common share count um, at any point in time without the board's approval. Um, so therefore, uh, based off of that 16 million, they can't have more than 1.6 million shares of common stock. So just want to point that out and then you can see the maximum number of shares to be offered this is the 75 million uh, pursuant this s1 uh, and then you can see the total number of uh, shares of common stock owned after the offering um, and you can see here uh, that is just uh, a straight addition of the two and again this shows that there is no additional warrants as part of this s1 agreement this is just a straight up stock purchase agreement uh, between Isusa and Mullen Automotive. All right, folks, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let me know your thoughts on this video. Leave me a comment uh, on this information or leave me a comment on some future content you'd like to see me cover. And with that said, I just want to point out that I am just a investor in Mullen Automotive. I am not paid in any way. I take no compensation from the company. I'm just a mere investor who has a bullish outlook on the company and its operations. Uh, and with that, all that said, I hope you guys all have a great rest of the day and I'll see you on the next one.